Okay, so we bought my son a pinwheel phone about three months ago, so I wanted to do kind of a review of what we like about having a pinwheel phone itself. So my son got a phone when he turned 13 years old, and we wanted a phone that provided a little bit of independence for him, but also more peace of mind as a parent. Three things that we didn't want our 13 year old to have on his phone was full access to the internet, certain apps, and also social media. And pinwheel phones provide, has this really cool system that allows us to have control, but also the independence that our, um, that our son wanted. So this is the phone that we bought him. This is a pinwheel slim five. So this is about $200. It's a normal Android phone has 128 gigs on it. Um, it does everything that a normal Android phone does with the exception that each pinwheel phone has the pinwheel system installed into it. So I download the pinwheel caregiver app onto my phone and I can control what he has on his phone from my phone, which is really awesome. I really like that feature. This phone was $200. Um, and then you have to buy the, um, the pinwheel service that it provides. And that is $176 a year. And then you also have to pay for this, this phone, pro, the phone service provider, which is mint mobile. We went with mint mobile. Um, we wanted to use Google Fi, but it wasn't compatible with pinwheel. So that was unfortunate, but I hope maybe later on it will be, but mint mobile has been great. And that was at $196 for the full year. So to get the phone and the service started for a full year was $583. Apart from the cost of the phone, per month to have this service, it's $31 a month, which I think is pretty reasonable, especially for the services that you get. Okay, so this is the pinwheel phone. So his phone right now is in what I call all mode, <clears throat> where he can text anybody in his contacts and he can have access to all the apps that we allow. So we allow him to have Spotify and Duolingo and Marco Polo and Kahoot and GroupMe, um, but he can't text anybody outside of the contacts that I have approved and he can't have any apps outside of the apps that I have approved. Here it shows all mode and um, it says, okay, it's gonna be in all mode for this many hours. When he's in school, um, he can't access any of these apps. The only apps that he can access are his school apps, and the only people he can text or call are his emergency contacts, his parents, basically. So it has pretty tight controls, um, but it also changes um, based on the time of day. This is the Pinwheel app that I downloaded. It's the Caregiver app. So here you can see um, this is basically all the things that my son, you can see where he's at. So there's a location on here that you can see where he is at, which is nice. And there's a location history. And then right here, if you click history, these are all the people that he's texted. And these are text messages. Unknown are people that have tried to text him, but aren't in his contact list. And so I have to approve these people if he wants to receive texts from them. And then here's his contact list. And these are only contacts that I have approved. On the apps, if you go to more and apps, these are all the apps that you can download onto your son's phone so or your child's phone. So these are all the apps that my son already has on his phone that I have approved. If I want to put it on a new app, I just have to search the app, um, uh, like Marco Polo, and then it will find the app. And then you can um, you can install this app if you want, but it says violates guidelines. So it says media or file sharing allowed. So this potentially could involve um, uh, bullying or people could send videos, inappropriate videos. So it kind of gives you a warning. Um, and it says, okay, before you approve this, think about what you're allowing. Right. And, um, so it's a really intuitive system that tell, helps the parent think about the apps that they're allowing their child to download here under the schedule section. This is his schedule. So 
on school days, Monday through Friday, he can text whoever he wants and have all the apps that I've approved during all mode, which is right before school starts. And then when he gets to school, it goes to school mode. So he can only text his parents and he can only use school approved apps, like things that he uses for school. Then it goes back to all mode during lunch and then school again. And then after school, it's all mode. And then bedtime, you can set a time when you want the phone to stop. So you could say 9 p.m. I don't want this to be working anymore, right? And that means bedtime and you can let them decompress. So it's a pretty cool system and I can do it all from my phone. I don't have to ask him, can I see your phone? Can I check this or whatever? So you can also switch to temporary all mode so that you don't have to change uh, manually change the school, the schedule. So if your child's at school and they need to look something up really quick, you can switch it to all mode and it switches immediately, which is really nice. Um, so yeah. So overall, I really like the pinwheel phone. I feel like it is a great way for your child to have their first phone, but it's a phone that I think I will have my kids have right until they move out of their, out of the house because they can have all the freedoms of a phone or they can have certain restrictions based on the child and what I'm comfortable with and what my husband is comfortable with as parents. But it really gave me a lot of peace of mind since this is my first child to have a phone. Um, I really didn't worry that much. And um, it, it allows for a lot of open communication with each other um, and helps us to talk about what the rules are. So, um, I would recommend a pinwheel phone 100% to anyone who is considering a phone for their, a first phone for their teenager. If you are interested in buying a pinwheel phone, you can click on the link in my description that will give you a discount code on your first phone. So 